conference play is a completely different animal from non-conference play. It's practically like two different seasons because you can play non-conference, go undefeated, and then lose all your conference games, and your non-conference schedule doesn't matter. It is strictly what you do in conference. The old saying is if you win at home and split on the road, you have a good chance of winning your conference. So that whole non-conference schedule is really almost like a preseason or some exhibition games to see what you have and what kind of talent levels you have. And the fact that Gardner-Webb had those ups and downs in non-conference play, uh, it got them battle tested. It got them battle ready uh, for the ups and downs of conference play. Anytime you have success, the enemy of success sometimes is complacency. You know, that's just human nature. You know, we're, we're, we were guarded against that and preaching that. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we just didn't play. We didn't play very well. We lost a couple games early and got back to where we were just kind of struggling with some confidence again um, and uh, some chemistry issues. It was just two different leagues, man. Like, the, the scouting report is so different as far as non-conference and conference play. So if I had to, to pick one thing that was just probably just the, the factor of us starting off so slow, I would just think it was just adjusting to the way people were guarding us, understanding like it's gonna be a lot harder now because people are gonna take us a lot more serious, especially after beating two ACC opponents. In league play, everybody knows you better. Everybody scouts you harder. The stakes are higher. It, it's it's just a it's a different level of intensity. It was just a struggle, you know. Credit their defense. Credit their defense. I thought they were doing a good job, kind of collapsing on our drives and trying to keep us out of the paint, and um, and, and and it was it was causing us problems. Well, they struggled mightily on the road, and they couldn't get it done. You saw this team and how youthful they were, and you noticed that their, the frustration was with the coaching staff as well, because I think they realized that. This team should be better than what they are. We got to be better on the road. You know, we were four and four in a non-conference on the road. And um, and so I felt like we got a team that can win on the road. But uh, for whatever reason here in league play, it's been tough and it's been difficult. And, you know, we just got to go in and play better. So two and four, you know, all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're like, whoa, you know, you're, you're, you're certainly humbled uh, by that. And, and I think it was easy to get our team's attention, you know, once – once we were, uh, you know, ha had that kind of rough start. And it took them about five, six games to kind of settle in and figure that out. But once they did, um, it got fun. We knew we needed to finish out the season strong and we needed to finish it out, keep it, keep it rolling. 21 and two of the last two seasons in Paul Porter Arena, still undefeated, you know, it makes for a great atmosphere to play in front of these fans. We had a big thing on protecting the home court like we just had that pride we just weren't gonna let anybody come to our house and beat us david effiani leading the way with a game high 23 points he's led all running bulldogs in scoring for the fourth consecutive game averaging nearly 23 points per game our guys were just terrific uh, i think all of them were playing really well my senior year was probably the best year um, as far as like the the fans and the atmosphere um, it was really like a home court advantage. I felt like the, the crowd was behind us each and every game. It was always great playing at home. It was always great. Like, people loved who you were for who you are. And I just loved playing there, honestly. To Winthrop at Gardner Webb. For context, Pat Kelsey is a remarkable head coach. Him and Kraft have had battle after battle after battle, whether that's in the tournament, whether that's in the regular season. And Gardner Webb just always struggled. It, you, you couldn't get past it. You talked so much earlier about frustration and how this team was really confusing. You have all the talent in the world uh, and they just weren't getting it. That's how it seemed. At the time, Winthrop comes into Paul Porter as the best three-point shooting team in the country. And Gardner-Webb holds them to 10 of 40 from three. Closed out on shooters extremely well. Defensive rotations were excellent. Thankfully tonight, they were 10 of 40. Hopefully that had a lot to do with our defense. You know, proud of our guys for executing our game plan. Kind of when we started to hit our stride a little bit, guys were looking to the, uh, DJ and Dave for a lot of leadership, um, buying into what Coach Kraft was talking about, you know, kind of the things that we needed to do to win games. So I think it was more of a, a, a chemistry thing where we all kind of came together. You know, we had all the right pieces in place, and then we had some really good players too. 
10 straight losses to this Winthrop team. You finally get the win. How does that feel for you guys? It feels really good. You know, it feels really good. I ask Kraft this, I say, this breaks a 10 game losing streak against Winthrop. How does that feel? And that might've been the most calm and relaxed I've ever seen Tim Kraft. You know, we've had some absolute battles and wars with them over the last few years. And um, I, mean, I just tell you, it's, it's really nice to come out on top, uh, you know, with this one. And you were able to get over that hurdle and break a 10 game losing streak against who a lot of people would see as the arch rival right now. That's when I realized, holy cow, this team is going to be special. Through that last month or so in the season, we were, we were rolling and just playing great. Man, you're winning these close games. You're winning these close games. And what does that do? It builds up confidence. And you start seeing maybe this team is going to be a team of destiny because the guys know how to get it done in the clutch. David Effiani became the all-time Division I leading scorer tonight with 19 points. Well, he's certainly meant a lot to us. Um, I think the biggest thing about Dave is he's gotten better and better and better. Crouch on the drive, he's going to get to the bucket, no, it's turned away. David Effiati and the running Bulldogs come in transition. Jamison Jr. into the paint, backdoor find for Justin Jenkins. What a play started by the block by David Effiati. Just having our crowd, you know, our fans, you know, cheering for us after every, every highlight, I guess, on the defensive end, offensive end, you know, everything. It's just like, I don't know, it gives that, that, that feel, that different energy, that extra boost, you know. Cornwall over the timeline, rim run, DJ Laster, a two-handed flush for the senior. You know, our team was playing great. We had really good players that year. I mean, we had really good players. Effiani to the left side, win for Cornwall. It's a design give and go. Effiani goes up and finishes the alley-oop with both hands. And finally, coach, maybe a stat that I'll throw at you that you were not aware of is you guys now, at least for now, are the third team in the entire NCAA to go undefeated at home this season. That's one of the goals that Coach Kraft always has uh, coming into the season. He always wants to be undefeated at home. The season before the tournament, uh, they were 10-2 at home. So you go from 10-2 and to 13-0, and and credit to Tim Kraft. He has always had a phenomenal home record. We've never won 20 games uh, in, going into the tournament, you know, regular season. And uh, so to finish with 20 wins is, is huge. And uh, to win like eight of our last 10 here heading into the tournament uh, is a good thing.